Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, I want to give you a really quick overview of macroeconomic policy. So we're not going to go into the detail in this video. All I want to do is give you a really quick overview. So if you're about to head into the exam or if you've just heard this concept and you're trying to get familiar, this would be the video to go to. I've got other videos that go more in depth about macro policy, but this is kind of our starting point. Okay, if I'm going to do this quickly, let's stop the preamble. So if we are talking about macro policy, focus on that macro part, the whole thing. So when we talk about macroeconomic policy, we're talking about policy that affects the whole economy, that affects the macro picture. The two policies we look at in terms of macroeconomic policy for the economics course are fiscal and monetary. Let's start with monetary policy. So monetary policy is the Reserve Bank of Australia's use of the cash rate to try and affect the level of economic activity and achieve other objectives, namely price stability or keeping inflation under control. The important thing to think about is that monetary policy is government policy. However, it is implemented or enacted by the independent RBA. So if you are ever asked to discuss government policy, don't get tricked. Absolutely discuss monetary policy, but make it clear that you understand that monetary policy is government policy, but is implemented by the independent RBA. So monetary policy, this is where the RBA is adjusting the cash rate. So uh, increasing the cash rate or decreasing the cash rate or even keeping on hold to affect the economy. So the process is the RBA is adjusting the cash rate that then affects the general level of interest rates and then the economy is affected. A couple of things to know that if you are increasing interest rates, that is contractionary monetary policy, trying to slow down the economy. If you are reducing interest rates, reducing the cash rate first, that is expansionary monetary policy because it's trying to expand the economy with the benefit of a lower cash rate and therefore lower interest rates. The RBA meets 11 times a year so that there is the opportunity to change monetary policy relatively frequently. However, in terms of it taking effect, that there is a substantial lag with monetary policy. It takes about six to 18 months for a change in the cash rate to affect the economy. So changes can be implemented relatively frequently, but the effect of changes in monetary policy, that's gonna take a bit of time to see. Uh, in terms of monetary policy, it is a blunt tool, which means we affect the whole economy and can't identify or pinpoint certain sectors. You either get all or nothing with monetary policy. Okay, if we then switch our attention to fiscal policy, fiscal policy is the federal government's use of the budget to achieve economic objectives. Uh, every May, except 2020 because of COVID, that the federal treasurer gets up in parliament and hands down the budget. The budget is like a plan of how much we're gonna spend and how much we're gonna earn. On the spending side, the kind of things the government spends its money on are welfare, education, health, defense, infrastructure, those kind of things. In terms of revenue, the main sources of government revenue are tax, individual, company, excise duties, those kind of things. When we talk about fiscal policy, it's very important to think about two components, structural and cyclical. Structural, also known as discretionary, these are the measures or spending or revenue decisions that the government deliberately makes. So it's not about the economy changing, it's about the government saying, we are going to do this. So for example, the government might say, next financial year, we're gonna increase education spending by $2 billion. This is a discretionary, a structural decision. On the other side of fiscal policy, so structural here, we've got cyclical or non-discretionary. Cyclical is what it sounds like, like the business cycle. Cyclical factors are factors that are affected by the level of economic activity. These are also known as automatic stabilizers. So on the cyclical side, we've got unemployment benefits and tax revenue, and they go up or down depending on the level of economic activity. They change automatically. The government is not making decisions about how much money is collected here. That is why they are known as automatic stabilizers. That's why it's called 
non-discretionary because the government isn't choosing it there. The automatic stabilizer is really trying to work against the business cycle. So if the economy is growing, the automatic stabilizers will slow it and vice versa. In terms of fiscal policy, the key things to focus on are outcome and stance. Outcome, that is the value of the budget at the end of the financial year, usually a forecast, so that we can have a surplus, a deficit, or a balanced budget. In terms of the stance of fiscal policy, again, you get expansionary, growing the economy, contractionary, slowing the economy, and neutral. But it really depends on the outcome between the year. So year one, you might have a large deficit, year two, a small deficit. Okay, so that's contractionary fiscal policy. So hopefully this was a good introduction to macroeconomic policy. Just think about it, macro, whole economy, monetary, and fiscal. Okay, if there are any questions, issues, or concerns, just put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.